I was in college, I was a chemistry major. But I kept putting off my chemistry homework to cook. I was curious about food and cooking. And now, eight years later, I'm 26, and I run an online food marketplace called Foodsy. Basically, I help small food crafters who sell their chocolate or cheese, I help them sell it online. And I'm passionate about what I do. But today, I'm not here to talk about finding your passion. I'm here to talk about curiosity. We all want to find the thing that we love to do, just like we all want to find our true love, right? How many of you are roaming your high school halls looking for a husband or a wife? <laughs> Anyone? I can't really see you. Oh, I see hands. OK, a couple, a couple. Well, for the most of us, it doesn't start out that way, right? It starts out with, he's hot, and she's cute, and flirting, and all that good stuff before love, right? It's still the same way with finding the thing that you love to do. So think of it as going on dates with ideas, or exploring your curiosities. The first thing that I did to explore my curiosity for food was I paid attention to my free time. Gallup surveyed, actually, a thousand teenagers about your age and asked the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? Probably a question you're all sick of hearing. Um, and over 50% picked the same 10 jobs. So why is this important? Well, because I think actually one of the most important things for young people, even myself, to acknowledge, is that the limit of our imagination is based on the experiences that you've had. So basically, young people coming up with the same answers because we don't have the experiences to know what else exists. So how do you get experiences? You pay attention to how you spend your free time. So I'm asking each of you to spend maybe 15 minutes a day exploring something that you're curious about. It's really actually not that much time. It's the combined commercial breaks in an episode of Glee, or five YouTube videos, or <laughs> stalking your friend's photos on Facebook. I know you all do it. <laughs> you have 64 chances every day, given you sleep about eight hours, to slide in an experience that will help you explore a curiosity that you have. It's worth it, I promise. Second thing I did was I learned from the best. So, who's the best basketball player in the NBA? Kobe. Kobe. LeBron James, right? <laughs> okay, I know this is controversial, right? <laughs> okay, well, in every niche profession, there's somebody that's the best at it, right? Or maybe there's a few people that are the best at it. Find who that is for the thing that you're curious about. Go on Google, search for it, find out everything as much as you can about what they do. And don't be afraid to reach out to them. You'll be amazed, actually, at how often the answer, when you ask for help, is yes. When I was curious about food, I picked up my, my favorite uh, magazine, Cooking Light magazine. This is what was teaching me to cook in college. And I opened up to the mass head that lists out all the editors in the magazine has all their email addresses. And there was a woman in there, Kathy Kitchens. Honestly, that was her name. And uh, I wrote her an email. And an amazing thing happened. I used the key words, I'm a student, and I want to learn. And what happened? She wrote back, OMG. <laughs> and we got on the phone, and we talked. And I basically said, how can I have your job? And the advice she gave me just literally took me years ahead of where I was, and it happened in a 30-minute conversation. Mentorship is powerful. So I wanted to know, actually, how many connections do you have through the speakers that stood on the stage today? I scoured LinkedIn. It's a social network for business contacts, if you're not familiar. And through the 23 contacts, there's 3,827 connections, people doing interesting things that could maybe help you. So don't be afraid on your breaks, not only to connect, but to ask for business cards and follow up with those people to ask for help. 
to explore something you're curious about. The third thing I did was I wasn't afraid to work for free. Or in other words, you do shit, even if no one wants to pay you to do it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why free instead of paid, right? Well, when you're young, you actually don't have that many experiences. So if you're willing to work for free, you can pick the thing you want to do. You're not competing in interviews against people who are more well experienced than you. You can just pick the thing you want, find the company that's doing it, and pitch it. Create the experience that you want. Now, I know that not everybody actually has the luxury to do all your work for free. I didn't either, actually. When I was in college, I, I had to keep a, a job uh, working at my apartment complex to pay my way through school. But you can carve out some time. For me, it was two hours a week that I wrote a food column for my school paper. And I got the experience writing that led to then paid freelance food writing work. It then led to a full-time job in the food business, and now my own business in the food business. So think of that thing that you're curious about. Find the company that could give you that experience and be bold. Pitch yourself and what you want to do, and don't be afraid to do it for free. Now, you're all here on a Saturday at TEDx because you're already doing number one. You're paying attention to how you're spending your free time. So I challenge you to take one idea from today, one thing that caused a spark. Maybe it's graffiti art or dark matter. Something that made you ask the question, but why? Carve out 15 minutes a day, find the best people doing it, and get experience by doing work for free. Because when you're curious, you'll find lots of interesting things to do. Thank you.